My name is Carolyn Rogers Visna, and I'm a pediatric plastic and reconstructive surgeon in Boston, Massachusetts. And today I'll be discussing a research study called Pursuing Mirror Image Reconstruction in Unilateral Microtia, Customizing the Auricular Framework by Application of Three Dimensional Imaging and Three Dimensional Printing. Microtia is a relatively uncommon condition where a child is born with a very small or completely missing ear. Microtia is usually treated by surgery to build a new ear to create better symmetry, appearance, and enhance a child's quality of life. Historically, microtia has been treated by a procedure using the child's own rib to carve and build a new ear in a series of several operations. Over the last two decades, a technique using a type of plastic called porous polyethylene has become very popular. This has really been pioneered by Dr. John Reinisch from Los Angeles and has become popular because it minimizes pain because it doesn't use a rib and it requires only one operation as opposed to several. In the current research study, Chen and colleagues from Cheng Gung Memorial Hospital in Taiwan use computer-aided design and manufacturing as well as 3D printing technology to enhance their porous polyethylene ear construction. What they do is use a 3D photograph of the child's normal ear to mirror that ear onto the opposite side to best determine the size, shape, and position of the new ear. From there, they digitally subtract the skin in order to create a template that is 3D printed and then used at the time of the operation. That template is used to confirm the position of the new ear on the child's head and then the surgeon uses it during the operation as a template or guide to carve a block of plastic or porous polyethylene into a shape that best recreates a specific child's ear. One of the most novel ideas presented in this research is the method of mirroring the shape and position of the normal ear onto the side that's missing an ear in order to create the most symmetrical new ear possible. The second novel idea is the method of using digital imaging and 3D printing to generate a template that helps the surgeon during the operation to best position and carve the new ear. The photos the authors present are beautiful in terms of the reconstructed ear's size, shape, and position. Particularly, they achieve excellent projection of the ear, meaning how far the ear sticks out from the head. One of the main limitations, though, is that only six patients are presented, and so it's hard to know how this technology can be applied to a given patient or a given surgeon's practice. Another limitation is that they don't talk about the time that's needed to carve a block of plastic to match the template, and presumably this is being done while a child is asleep. The major takeaway message from this article is the concept that digital imaging and 3D printing modalities are useful adjuncts for improving surgical outcomes. In this article, the authors use these modalities to improve their surgical treatment of microtia, but the techniques they describe are broadly applicable to many types of reconstructive surgery as well as many other medical disciplines. As this technology becomes more increasingly available and affordable, patients should really expect to see it more and more in healthcare, particularly for medical conditions that require an operation or involve an implanted device, because digital imaging and 3D printing offer a level of personalization that previously has not been available in healthcare.